reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us to. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God.
Because his role in this beautiful gospel message that we hear today is unambiguous. It's super clear. He tells us, I am the good shepherd, period, full stop. It begs the question, though, what is our role? Now, there are four roles that are identified in today's gospel reading. There's the shepherd, the super obvious, Jesus. There is the wolf, does bad things. We don't want to be the wolf, just as, to, as, as better point of character. But then you have sort of this ambivalent character called the higher king. And we don't know quite what to make of the higher king. And then, of course, you have sheep. Now, you see, the interesting thing about us is that we, unfortunately, in the course of our lives, find ourselves occupying each of these roles at some point. It is part of our sin. Yes, unfortunately, there have been times in our life where we do find ourselves playing the role of the wolf. Regrettably so, for which we confess. But the really dangerous thing is when we find ourselves somehow slipping from the role of being shepherd, which we're called to do. You see, if Jesus is the good shepherd, period, full stop, and if we are Christ operative in the world, all members of one body, then necessarily our role should be as shepherd, full stop. Sometimes we might find ourselves slipping into that role of being the hired man. That kind of turns a blind eye, oh, I don't see, you know, kind of like the Sergeant Schultz, holy hero, remember? I know nothing, I know nothing. But in today's world, we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to take the benefits of being the sheep where Jesus leads us, he restores us, he refreshes us, he does all those things, and then on our own volition, we decide to make the higher hand. We can't do that. It's not the way that we're called to be. We are called to also have that active role. We are called to be out there and to help to refresh and restore and to lead. It's really, really quite clear. But like so many things that are very clear, they're easy to say, but not necessarily easy to do. Because sometimes our fear gets in the way. You see, even as much as Jesus leads and restores and refreshes and does all of these things to us as the sheep, it does not mean that the sheep have no harm. We do have harm. We have been harmed greatly over this past year with coronavirus. Yesterday, I think, or Friday, I spent some time with a woman who had a terrible bout with coronavirus. Two weeks in the hospital, blood clots, surgery, a lot of aftermath, still having problems, and yet she and I met specifically to talk about what we could do in the neighborhood around the Dakota Center. For those of you who may not know what the Dakota Center is, it's a beautiful, deeply historical, spiritual center down in the scene that's part of our diocese. It has history reaching back 175 years. Some of the buildings are that old. And it's interesting with all of the different things that have taken place over the many, many, many years and decades there in terms of the sisters and James Dakota himself and so on and so forth, there's never one thing that has been missing is to embrace the neighborhood around. It's interesting. And it is a neighborhood that is seeking to be led and restored and refreshed and so on, and we have a responsibility to it. We had a marvelous meeting. We talked about putting in urban gardens, engaging the kids, the teenagers, maybe a backpack program. We already have a learning pot there. You see, even in the midst of our harm, even in the midst of our dangers and our fears, we're still called to be a shepherd. We're still called. Julian of Norwich, who's a 14th century anchorite, and what an anchorite means is that's the most harsh, you might say, version of monasticism. That she lived isolated by herself in a cell in the corner of this church 
with only two windows, one end to see the sacrament and the other one to see the people. Mind you, this is during the Black Plague. This is during a time of war after war after war in the European theater. She says, we need to fall, and we need to be aware of it. For if we did not fall, we should not know how weak and wretched we are of ourselves. Nor should we know our Maker's marvelous love so fully. You see, when we do fall, when we do find ourselves creeping into that category of possibly being the hired man, of the Lord help us go even further into wolf territory, that's all that we need to come back up, because when we do, we realize that marvelous love, that protective love, because Jesus' role is unambiguous. He leads, he refreshes, he restores, period, full stop. She goes on to say, if there is anywhere on earth of a lover of God who is always kept safe, I know nothing of it. For it was not shown to me. She had all of these visions, you see. She also went through a tremendous, almost death defying illness. But this was shown that in falling and rising again, we are always kept in that same precious love. That's where faith comes in. To say that no matter how hard we fall, no matter how badly we're harmed, no matter how badly the people around us are harmed, that that same precious love is still there. That's the work of the shepherd. That's the work of taking care of the sheep that Jesus does so much for us and that we are called to do for others. Now, I don't know the first thing about taking care of the sheep. Not one thing. I wouldn't even know what to feed it. I do know how to take care of goats, however. Back many years ago, decades ago, we won't go too far, but a long time ago, I ran a day camp for a summer, a single solitary summer. It's a lot of work. We've got 20 kids about this high running around doing all kinds of things. One of the things that we did to occupy our time was to have a little animal farm. And I was fortunate enough to have a local farmer that was willing to donate these baby animals to me for the season so that we could have them and get fed and fed and get all these different things. Well, that included two milking goats. And mind you, I never milked a goat before. I mean, I went to Nicola High School. I did not ever milk a cup before. But I went out and I had 20 kids and said, well, we got to milk these goats. Well, it doesn't take 20 kids to milk a goat, but not, but it can if you get creative. You see, the statement that the Lord is my shepherd, he makes me lay down, he restores me, he leaves me, it's all very active and creative. And so what we did is we decided, okay, we've got 20 kids, we have two milkers, but we also have four legs on each animal, so we have to have the play holders, and then we had ear holders, and we had the tail holder, and then we just went around, and everybody took turns, and then we'd be like, I want to be the tail holder. Well, that's fine, sure, you'd be the tail holder. That's the kind of energy, that's the kind of commitment, that's the kind of creativity that we're called to do, not on simple things like dumping a goat, but on restoring and leading the other sheep. Jesus tells us there are sheep out there that are hard, that are being come into the fold. They're not here yet. Well, guess what that is? That's a beautiful gateway for us to help bring those sheep in. We must. We must be committed as shepherds to lead, to restore, to refresh. And I want to give you an example of someone in, from this country, this story, that did that even in the face of his own and his wife's own great harm. Great harm. Gentleman's name is Horatio Stafford. And I was reminded of this when I was listening to the Lutheran Hour this morning at 6 o'clock. Yes, Father John, I do listen to the Lutheran Hour. <laughs> I love some of this stuff. I think that's great stuff. So I had to add this in. Horatio Stafford is the author of a beautiful hymn that we all know about, that my, it is well with my soul. It's a beautiful hymn. It's a comforting thought. It's a thought of a shepherd. 
that is well enough to buy salt. Now, mind you, this is a person who had great riches in Chicago in the late 19th century, only to see a huge mound of go up and smoke in the Great Fire of Chicago. And then he was, uh, they needed to go to Europe to visit family, so he sent his wife and four daughters ahead to Europe on a ship. And he stayed behind to tend to some of the business failures and then to join them later. Well, that ship sank, killed all four daughters with the mother's spot. They reunified, they, they fell down clearly, they stood back up. They ended up having three more children, but their son died at age four, the only son. They ended up really having one trauma after another. And yet, they went on to do great ministry in Jerusalem. They went on to shepherd the other. In their own arm, they were the wounded healer. The wounded healers are sometimes the richest ones because they know how deep it can hurt. But they don't allow that hurt to dissuade them into becoming the higher hand or having a red wolf. No. Commitment. The energy to lead, to restore, to refresh. All of the things that we hear in the beautiful song. And even though I walk through the darkest of the valleys, I fear no evil because your rod is with me, your staff and rod comfort me. And as Julian of Norwich kind of adds into their one of her most famous lines, and I take it to heart all the time, when she says, and all shall be well. And all shall be well. And you will see for your own that all manner of thing shall be exceedingly well. Stand in. Let's join together in our historic profession of faith, Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Lamb, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father. Give us 
grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departing eternal rest. Today we pray for our brothers and sisters who have departed. Larry, Doreen, Nance, Kathy, Anne, Sue, Bob, Ken, Leah, Nancy, Vaughn, Seal, Florence, Marianne, Remy, Sai, Betsy, Joe Dan, Andre, Rosemary, Sutton, Robbie, Catherine, Richard, Beth, Dick, Joyce. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please offer each other an energetic socially distance of peace. Well, I thank you all for taking a little time this morning. Please be seated. Uh, thank you for taking some time for this beautiful spring day. We finally have some summer's weather on the way. But thank you for taking the time to come in be with us here in person and for those who are on the other end of the camera thank you as well uh, we are still in a very transitional time i thank you for putting up with all of our different uh, restrictions that we have in place and we're doing our very best based on the science as we know it and it will continue to evolve so it's one of those things that we share in patience together and thank you very much walk in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us of offering and sacrifice Thank <laughs>
heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your name, when we fall in sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is Christ is Christ is Christ. Christ is Lord, Lord. Amen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Take them in remembrance of Christ dying for you, and be not in your heart by faith. 